Hello and welcome to a new adventure. So today we're down here at the beautiful Middleton Park and I've been invited down today by uh, a guy called Chris and him and his friend called Jim are going to show me around all the historical sites in Middleton Park. Now if you don't know Middleton Park it is absolutely massive and it's beautiful but it's also covered in tons of history going back four or five hundred years easily and there is a lot of things here to discover. So who better to show me than two people that know all about this park. And also they run their own tours in the park for the members of the public to come and have a look at the history. Now they've kindly invited me down today to show me some of their tours that they do. But they're also going to tailor it just for us so we can give you a bit more information on the history that was here. Now because there are many different elements to the types of things that you can find in this park, we're going to split this up into multiple videos. But the first thing we're going to look at today, we're going to take a look at the old mining history of this park. Now there used to be bell pits here, horse gin pits, and also collieries, like modern day collieries as I would call them, all around this site. So we're going to take a look at those in today's video. So let's head down to the visitor centre where I'm going to meet Jim and Chris and they're going to take us on a little tour around the park. At Middleton Park, as you know it today, is a beautiful parkland with a playground, a boating lake and a big massive bike park at the other side as well. In days gone by, this would have been a mining site as well. So we've got a stately home on here and this used to be private parkland. So it's had many uses throughout its history. But like I said, today we know it as Middleton Park, which is a public park, as you can see. So just to my right here now, we have what would have been known as a horse gin. Now gin being short for engine, because this mine shaft here was powered by horses doing circles to bring up the coal from down below. So you can see what would have been the shaft there. Now this is a replica, it's not the original. But you can see what would have been a shaft there with a, a drum with the uh, cable or the rope going down into the mine. And then you can see this giant spindle here, just over there. So the horses would have turned this bar here and pulled it around in a circle, winding this gear, which would have turned this drum and brought the coal upwards that way. So as Jim and Chris were explaining to me, right where we're heading now, which heads right through the park, down right to the bottom side of it, you can see how straight this track is or this path going all the way down the hill. Now back in years gone by when they had all the mines around here including the bell pits and the gin horse gins this would have been what they called a wagon way which is where they would have brought the goods up the hill here collecting from the mines as it came up because you had various mines dotted on either side. Now when we get further down I'll show you some of those mines so like I said, we had horse chains and bell pits as well. Yeah, if you look down here, you dead giveaway, it's absolute straight as a die, constant gradient so the wagons didn't roll away too fast. Excellent. And they're just <laughs> too fast. <laughs> look at the gradient. Was it, cold. was it cable driven or? No, no. Just gravity. Three, three just gravity. gravity and a brake. Oh, the brake was a wooden lever over the back wheel that the driver sat on. Oh, no thanks. <laughs> I don't mind the cable ones, but... Hang on, we'll stop here. There was a big pit up there, which was only capped in the 1950s and was used as a ventilation shaft for Broom Pit. Broom Pit. So that was actually... And there are people around who remember when it was just surrounded by wood, throwing pebbles in and counting to the bottom. <laughs> now this wagon way, which is on the east side of the park, and I'll show you on this map here where we are. This was one of a few different wagon ways which existed. Now obviously, as the mines were mined, they obviously started to run out of coal in them areas so they would move the mines further around the site and as they did that they had to move the wagon way as well. Now if you were to look on one of the old maps from 1892 onwards you'll see if you look at this park that it's absolutely littered with markings on the map that says shaft so they would have been the well-known mines that were here but probably the more recent ones there were shafts and mines way older than that here as well and as we're walking around, Jim and Chris are showing us all these holes in the ground. There's just loads of them and they are everywhere. So it just shows you how much this area was worked for mining back in the day. So we've now reached the bottom of the wagon way, the first wagon way. And you can just see the incline behind me, how steep it is. 
I know it's really hard to gauge it on a camera, but that's probably a mile of steep gradient there all the way back up to the centre of Middleton Park. And if you just look behind me, you can see here where the line would have t bent to the left here. And it would have joined the other wagon way that I was talking about, which would have crossed right in front of us up there. So where we are now is what would have been the other second wagon way. Now it follows the other one, which is just down there in the valley, heading up that way. It follows that one parallel and heads out, but on a different route up through the park. And like Jim and Chris were telling me, they would have moved the mines around depending on how much coal was left. So once they'd mined all the coal out, they would abandon it and then find a new spot, move over there and start mining there. Now the modern day, what I keep calling the modern day mining, uh, which is Middleton Broom Colliery. And also I think there was a Beeston pit as well, just at the bottom of the site over here. That would have all been, like I said, 1900s and onwards. The mines that were here would have been 1600s, 1700s, into the 1800s. And then when they moved on to more advanced mining systems, like the modern day collieries, with their huge lift shafts and uh, winding gear, things like that, and the uh, deep mining. They were much further away from here, but still on the same site and the same coal. They were, it's called seam that they were after. Just looking at this information board here, like I said, there's been mining in the park since 1632, as you can see there. And the wagon ways came about in 1755. Now they used to run all the way down to a coal stave in the centre of Leeds from here. So they would have continued down the hill all the way into the centre of Leeds so they could transport the coal out to the canals and rivers down there. Now, as Jim and Chris were saying further back there, these wagonways, they weren't powered by steam engines or anything like that, not until later in the life anyway. It would have been a wooden carts full of coal coming down this steep incline. And they would have had a brakeman on the carts that would have slowed the carts down as they descended down the hill by gravity alone. Now, imagine that on this steep gradient here, shooting down here with only a brake. And if that fails, you're straight down. When the carts came back up the hill, they would have been pulled up by horses, obviously empty at this point because they'd unloaded their goods down in Leeds. So they would have been empty coming back up through the park. Now the first wagon way that we walked down in the video was this one here, the straight line. And you could see where I said it joined the other one at the bottom there. The one that we're on now is this one here, which ran pretty much parallel with this one. And it ran all the way to the top of the park. There's also another wagon way further to the other side, the west side of the park, which fed a couple of pits further over here. Anyway, this is the one. You can see there's the circle. And actually, if you take the wood away, can you see the, the, coal, the um, stone face Where's there? that stone? It looks like wood from here. No, it's stone. Let's get closer. And, uh, like a piece of timber, but yeah, it's stone. No, it isn't, it's stone. And this was the top of the shaft. So ignore the bonfire wood yeah, here. Yeah, that someone's just had a bonfire in here. It's, uh, it's the original stone edge of the shaft there. In fact, the centre pole for the thing was probably up here, and then the horse went round. Makes sense. And it's about the same diameter as the reconstruction. Makes sense. A lot of these mines were 1700s in here, mm. and then you said they didn't mine for a period. Well, it got worked out. Okay. So they moved up the hill to the following the coal seam that way. Right. To and, the modern colliery. Yeah, and then they started mining on the Middleton Plateau up there. So these were worked out, and so there wasn't the need for a wagon way up here. So this was done away with in about 1812. Those were stopped, and the wagon ways ran up from where Broom Pit was. Yeah up that valley, up a, a, a roped incline and onto the Middleton Plateau. You're saying they basically abandoned all the mines yeah. uh, from this end because they would mined it out basically yeah. and these were all the 1700 mines and earlier and earlier and they ended up a bit further up the site up there which we'll see a bit later. 
So we've just uh, stumbled across this tree which has obviously fallen across the path and they've just cut it in half and look, how si look at the size of that down there. So it's all fallen into the valley here. And then you've got the uh, base of it there. So this is what he was saying is a bell pit bell now. Pit, so it's yeah. a different type of pit from the others that we saw up there. Because at this point, the coal seam is actually not far under the surface of the ground here. Because we've come down the hill. So the coal seam would have run in a straight line. And as you further up the hill you go, obviously the deeper it is. So down here, we're actually level with it. So they didn't have to dig much further down there. The coal seam does actually rise, but not as much as Slightly. land. See, this is just a little crater, because here it would have been a much smaller hole and there's kind of a, be a cluster of them, there'd be so many yards apart and they'd just dig down, dig the coal out, and then when they thought the roof was going to collapse, they'd abandon that shaft and go and dig another one. Into the next one. So he was just saying that all this site down here, which I was just explaining to you up there, is covered in bell pits. He's just shown me a couple of examples, of a nice deep one there. You can see these little holes in the ground where the bell pits would have been. They're everywhere, all around the site. He said they're scattered everywhere across this uh, bottom end of the park. So he was just saying right at this point here, there was a, a brickworks. Which side was the brickworks? That side. It was over, just behind the camera over there. And on this side we had a quarry. So obviously they needed to get the uh, stone across the brickworks. So what they did, they built a mineral railway between and uh, used to run underneath this road here. Now, obviously that's long gone, but it's just going to show me, Chris is going to take me and show me where there's a stream that runs underneath now. And he says that was where the mineral railway would have come under. Not, th not the exact bridge, but in the uh, line. You just see the culvert there. It's, it's a more modern culvert. Than... So this is the culvert, and this is on the old mineral railway line. But he just said that this is a this is a purpose-built culvert for the stream now. There would have been a tunnel here for the mineral railway. So like I was saying much earlier, before it was a, a public park, this used to be a private parkland for a, a house which was situated at the top of Middleton up there. And it was a private estate. And as all private estates do, they have gatehouses. Now if you watched my Milner Field video which was the same thing. That had two gatehouses. Now I believe Middleton Park had three, so I'm told anyway. And right here would have been one of the gatehouses, so this would have been the northern one. Now if you just look over here, this would have been the site of a huge gatehouse or a Gothic mansion here, which would have been the entrance into the estate. So right where we are now would have been roughly the site of the Middleton Broom Colliery, which was a rather large colliery site. There was also a brickworks right opposite as well. Now that would have been situated just behind these trees, all on this top site up here. But that is what I would call a modern day mine. It was a colliery. Now again, when I say modern, I'm talking 1900s onwards. But the pits or the mines that we're talking about in the park predate that by many years. So they've just been saying right behind me here in these trees is what would have been the original Belle Isle, the actual village of Belle Isle. Now today we know it as Belle Isle, which is up there to my left, which is a modern council estate. Now again, I'm saying modern in terms of what's here in the history, it is modern. So there was a, a modern council estate, which is now called Belle Isle. Now Chris was just telling me that Belle Isle was actually named after the Battle of Belle Isle, is that correct? Possibly. Possibly, we think, we're not sure. And he did say that they found evidence, or they may have found evidence that predates the name being there before that, so maybe not. But yeah, there was a, a row of cottages and a few other bits of a village all in this site here. Now, we don't think there's anything left today. It's all been uh, re-landscaped and probably landfill maybe. But he said it was, what, what we, when would you say it was demolished? Uh, some, uh, 1950s. 1950s, it was all cleared in the 1950s. And he said that it might have been uh, in a bad state and it was a bit of a slum, so they uh, <laughs> definitely got rid of it. He was just saying as well that the village actually didn't have any running water or electricity. It was just gas lights. So, yeah, it was a bit of an old-fashioned village, shall we say, and cut it, off. I think it had... it didn't have running water into the houses. 
but it had it in standpipes outside. Oh, okay. So maybe wells and standpipes. But yeah, it was quite an, an old village, this. Yeah. That was the original Belle Isle, not the one we know today. <laughs> now, Jim and Chris were telling me this whole park is built on top of many fault lines in the area and also many coal beds underneath here, different ones, and at different levels and different heights. Now, we're just walking up this hill here, and all you can see down here is coal in the floor. Just tons of it, so you can see what was in the area. You can just see big chunks there. There's loads of it all the way up here. The pits we looked at near the wagonways, we were saying that they were all worked out by the very early 1800s. And the, um, there was a survey of the mine in 1808. They were looking to sell the mine at one point, which didn't go ahead. And they figured there was a lot of unworked coal in this area. So they, they built three pits around here. Um, part pit, middle pit and wood pit. Um, and th this is probably round about where part pit would have been. And we've got wood pit further up, which... So this has been a bell pit? No, no. Or a different type? Different, different one. Um, this would have gone down, although we're on similar level to where we saw the bell pits, this would have gone down to a better seam of coal further down. Okay. There's a big uh, geological fault between the far side and this side. So oh, yeah. the coal seams don't match. Okay. So it's a bit different. So different levels. Yeah. So yeah, it's quite, uh, you can't really see it on the camera, but that is quite deep. It's probably 10 feet, 12 feet deep. But on here, it just looks like a bump. <laughs> As you can see, if you just look around the woodland, if you just walk through here, you can just see these random ditches like this. Spaced out everywhere. And there's one just down there and one here. They're all just ex-pits, really, that have been uh, left and abandoned. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe to the channel for free by clicking the logo here and click subscribe. Like the video and put any comments you have down below. If you would like to support the channel or would like to make a donation, there are links in the description below. And finally, a big thank you to our existing supporters of the channel. See you on the next adventure.